So maybe it's the freshness. Maybe it's the Lactigo that I put on. Maybe it's Maybelline. What is going on ladies and gentlemen? My name is Sarah and I hope each and every one of you is having an absolutely wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me for another video. If you are new to the channel, thanks for coming along. I hope you'll consider subscribing. And if you've been here before, well, thanks for coming back. You're in for the same shenanigans and ridiculousness that you've come to expect from my channel. So I appreciate every single one of you. But in any event, you are joining me for a bit of an experiment as I am trying out the Sufferfest for the very first time. I have ignored this app for almost six years. I have been on online training platforms for about six years now. Starting Starting with the Cyclops training app. I'm rounding out about five and a half years close to that for Zwift. Joined up Trainer Road not that long after and for some reason the Sufferfest just never appealed to me. Uh, I guess my impressions early days it just seemed like watching the videos I didn't know what the real point of it was and I basically ignored it. And I don't know what incited me a few weeks ago to take a look at their website again and give them another chance but I see the fresh face of Sufferfest and I see that Wahoo acquisition they've pumped a little bit more design a little bit more money into it and I started roaming around on the website and saw that they had some actual features that made it a little bit appealing. They've got some yoga workouts, some strength workouts, some uh, mental toughness or mental training workouts and it just seemed like they were offering a little bit more value. Still the same overall structure, but I figured, you know what, 14 day trial, I may as well try it out. I wanted to wait till I was done with the cycling portion of the Zwift Academy Try and Zwift Academy Road, but now that I've freed up my time on the bike, I am going to try this out for a couple of weeks and, and see what I think and give you guys my personal feedback. So you are joining me on this bit of an experiment here. Maybe I'll love it, maybe I'll hate it. I'll tell you either way, but maybe it's worth it. So I'm giving it a try and no, I'm not abandoning Zwift. I will never abandon Zwift. I love Zwift. Zwift is my friend and I won't abandon Trainer Road either. This is just something different, different uh, app to throw in the arsenal. We're, we're all, you know, up to the gills with subscriptions these days. So what the hell's another one, right? But we'll see if they earn my subscription after these 14 days. But I'm going to start with a cycling workout today. And then over the next few days and weeks, I will try out some of their other elements like their strength and mental training. But today I'm just going to cover the bike, getting set up what the user experience is like and share it with you guys. Okay, so I'm going to be selecting my workout here. I did cruise around the menus just a little bit. I'm just going to focus on a workout today just to get the first impressions video done, but they have a pretty decent menu system, pretty intuitive, an area for your calendar, a workout screen, which I'm on right now being able to select a training plan. They actually have a bunch of different training plans for all different uh, disciplines in cycling, including multi-sport. And then they've got your 4DP passport or profile area. I'm gonna dig more into the 4DP portion as I progress through this. I'm just going to start with the experience here. But right in the workout screen, they've got that broken down into cycling, strength, yoga. They've got the mental training on here and they even have a few workouts for running. They only have like three on there right now, but it looks like it's something they're trying to develop here. You can sort them uh, alphabetically or by a few different elements like uh, intensity factor, duration. So it looks like you can sort them, but you can't, it doesn't look like you can filter. So if I'm gonna click on something like TSS here, it's just going to sort them by TSS. So that's workable. You can just kind of scroll through for what you need, but I really like on Trainer Road where I can really select and drill down into, you know, what the duration I'm looking for is, what type of working zone I want. But that, this is certainly workable. That's just kind of splitting hairs. Uh, there's a few little glitchy things I've noticed with the UI here where uh, if I start, if I scroll down to the bottom of one workout to look at it and then I select a different workout, uh, I start at the bottom of the page so then I have to scroll back up. I, it should just automatically populate to the top. Not a big deal, but just kind of a nitpicky thing there. All the workouts are really weird times too. So for us uh, kind of OCD athletes, like the workout that I think I'm going to pick right now is a, um, an hour, 14 minutes and 13 seconds. I mean, that's really precise. I don't know why you wouldn't make that a straight hour and 15 minutes, uh, but they're all like that, the, an hour and 42 minutes, two hours and eight minutes. So it, it really just, it, it really messes with their OCD. Maybe that's intentional, but it's, it's not kind of silly in my opinion. The other thing that I don't like, I haven't found a way around it, and maybe I'm missing something really obvious, but I like being able to, both on Zwift and Ruby and, and on Trainer Road, is to be able to kind of scrub over the graph and to have it actually show me what the power output is. It's actually really difficult to tell by looking at this what the power output is going to be. So the only way I figured out that you can do this is to actually go into the workout and fast forward the playhead through the workout itself 
and then kind of look, but e even then it, it's kind of tough to see. Like I like to almost hover over something and say it's gonna hold me at 210 watts for two minutes. I just want that at a glance so I can mentally prepare myself for the workout or see if it's something that I'm up for. Sometimes intensity factor doesn't show you everything. But that's just kind of my first impressions. Obviously, they're still kind of early into the Wahoo days, and I haven't used this before. I, I think it's a good start, though. I think that it's a good profile. This is just kind of spoiled from other platforms and things that I'm used to, and I come over here, and it's not there, and I kind of want it to be there. So without any further procrastination, I'm going to get into my workout. I've chosen a workout called The Shovel. Again, an hour and 14 minutes and 13 seconds. Gotta get those 13 seconds in, guys. It's really important. Uh, TSS is 98. It's a category they call it as a speed workout. The intensity factor is just under 0.9. And uh, it, it's broken down the uh, 40p focus, so I will show that up on the screen for those of you who might be familiar with the Sufferfest and tell me I'm being a complete idiot. But it looks like I'm just gonna come over here and hit play. And there I am. So I get it. I see where the appeal is from some folks. I don't know if I understand the cult following, but I do understand where the appeal would be with this program. It's completely unique. It's its own thing. There is definitely nothing out there that's quite like it. It has compelling features that you can't get anywhere else. The 4DP, I think, is something that's of interest. I could see using it in conjunction with just standard FTP and being able to balance it into like a racing profile as well as your training. So I think that's definitely kind of cool. And then the, the way that they handle the program, I think it's just, it's different. And I, I would never personally use a program like this as my primary training program. That's just me personally. I think I'm very happy using something like Trainer Road in conjunction with Zwift. It seems to pair very well for what I need it for, but I can see sprinkling this in. I'm not 100% sold on it, but I'm not saying no either. There's a couple of little nitpicky things that I don't like, but I could certainly overlook them. But then there's one thing that I'll talk about closer to the end that could potentially be a deal breaker. I'm going to continue to kind of suss this out and figure out what's going on. It, it could potentially be a deal breaker that doesn't allow me to go past the first two weeks. I think for the price, I think there's a lot of value here. The yearly cost, if you pay up front, is $129. I think for that, just at face value, I think that there's $129 of value for the year. If you do it monthly, it's $14.99. And if I kind of stack that up against the competitors, if I stack that up against Zwift, if I stack that up against Trainer Road, I don't quite see the value at $14.99 a month just compared to what's to its left and right. You save $50 by doing it annually, and if you can just cobble together the 130 bucks, I recommend doing that way if you are interested in it. Annual is certainly the way to go, and I think they give you an incentive so they can get that money up front, and then you're locked in for the year and you're good to go. I wanna talk about the positive stuff first because I think that's the appropriate way to start a review. I don't wanna start with the negative because the negatives are mostly nitpicky and the one big thing, I, I still need to give it a fair shake and see if I can work my way through it. So the things that I like about it, the onboarding experience, but I don't, I don't think I can understate that. That shows an attention to detail and to your customers that is very important that you really don't get from other programs. Now, some of the other programs, like Trainer Road, does an excellent job providing value in terms of offering up a lot of uh, YouTube videos that are of help to them, a lot of tutorials, a walkthrough on the program in that regard. So you can source it externally. It's not quite as seamless as being able to just log into the program and having it jump you right into the tutorial. You literally have a guy on your screen with a funny mustache that's pointing at things and telling you where to go, which is super cool. But when the programs at least offer it, I think that that's great. Zwift has historically done poorly at this. I created my own video about a beginner's guide to Zwift because that information does not exist in one comprehensive source out there. I like being able to help people, but I shouldn't have to make that video. Zwift should have that out there for folks. Now I understand that now that you, if you sign up for Zwift as a newbie, I think that the onboarding experience in the app itself is a little bit better, but it's really, it's just, it's not what it should be. And I think that they've acknowledged that they need to do a little bit better. I think to learn about Zwift, you really need to source the community. You have to source you know, their website forums, all that stuff. I think that that's just kind of a, uh, that's kind of a thumbs down on the Zwift side and, and a thumbs up on the Sufferfest side. So great job there. 
the program itself. It's not very resource intensive. So if you're looking for a trainer program that's not gonna dog your computer, if you're working on a budget PC or an older Mac, uh, I think that this is great. It's a mostly web-based app. There is no Android support, but there is iOS support. But if you're just running an older computer, an older laptop, this will run fine. As long as you have reasonable bandwidth, uh, you can run it. And even if you have kind of lousy bandwidth, if you're in like a rural area, if you're working off satellite or something that's not super fast, you can either download the video in advance so that it doesn't need to buffer through uh, the internet that way, or you can just turn the video off and the actual workout itself should really take little to no bandwidth whatsoever. Just enough connectivity to get data is all that you really need to get what you need out of this program. I can also also overlay this on top of Zwift. So I do that with Trainer Road to give myself some different visuals to look at. So if I don't want the videos, I can run Zwift in the background and just use this to control the erg and to run workouts if I want to do some of the Suffer Fest workouts rather than a workout on Zwift or Trainer Road. So that's a plus for me. I think the user interface is fair. I think it's it's nice and contrasty. It's nice to look at. It's pretty intuitive. Those couple little nuancey things that I mentioned, uh, notwithstanding, I think that you can find pretty much everything that you need to find. The one thing that I thought was missing from kind of the onboarding and when you enter your rider profile, so it'll walk you through kind of your, your gender, your height, your weight. It'll ask you if you know your FTP. It'll ask you if you know your cadence that you typically ride at. And it'll have you link through all of your external apps that that took like less than a minute to link to every single Strava, Training Peaks, Garmin Connect, all that. It's super intuitive and very easy to do that. What it didn't ask you to plug in, and I didn't even notice it at the time, is it doesn't ask for your max heart rate, which I thought was kind of weird after the fact because I'm in the workout and I was really confused about something. I'll talk about that in a second. I realized I didn't put in my max heart rate. So I found the place for heart rate after the fact by going into your rider profile and you don't actually put in a max heart rate, you put in your lactate threshold heart rate. It actually wants you to do a 4 dp test, but if it's known, I, you were just able to hit edit and enter it in there. So I happen to know that from just riding and testing, but I thought that was just kind of weird. It was a little bit different. It was just kind of their own methodology that's divergent from the norm, and that's fine. It is what it is, but there's a little confusion around heart rate for me, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. I think the plans at first blush, they look like they're pretty decent. It allows you to kind of toggle on and off if you want to use their mental training training, if, they want to use, uh, if you want to use their strength training, whether you are going to integrate yoga, things like that. So you can turn all those things on and off, give it a duration. There's a bunch of dis different disciplines. I haven't really dug deep into that. This video is really wrapped around me just getting on and what's the experience like if you just kind of want to dive in and, and ride within five minutes. I'm just kind of giving my first impressions. But at first blush, it looks like it's gonna be pretty decent, but I'll, I'll use these next two weeks to really dig into more of those features and hopefully I'll give you some feedback on those if you're interested. I think the visuals in the workout itself, they were actually better than I expected them to be. I, I had understood them to be like the videos of bike racing. And me personally, I've never been one to turn on an old bike race and watch it while I'm riding. Some people really dig that stuff. Me personally, I think a lot of bike racing is kind of boring. I, I mean, just if you've watched the tour before, right? Several hours of it is just completely boring. A lot of, you know, it was all about the the announcers talking about the castles and so on and so forth. But a lot of it is just not a whole lot of excitement. There's only about maybe 20% of the bike race that's really interesting for most of these. But they do pluck out parts of races that are just interesting. They pick the breakaway, they pick a climb, they pick the sprint finish or a, a mountaintop finish that kind of matches up with the tempo of the actual workout itself. So I thought that that was kind of cool. They changed it up a little bit. It's interspersed with some kind of interesting, quippy little on-screen instructions, kind of snide little commentary, which I thought was pretty funny. And then they talk about like the minds of Sufferlandria. And at one point I was watching a backhoe. What the fuck am I looking at? Why am I looking at a backhoe? It, I felt like I literally laughed during this workout a couple times. So I think they did a good job with it. I don't know if it captured my attention because it was just so variable and they jumped around enough to make it interesting or if it was because of my focus being on, like these intervals are pretty close together. So you're really focusing from one to the next. There's no, not a whole lot of recovery between them. So we'll see if it still captures my attention if I'm doing a more sustained effort. Uh, in terms of the workouts, I thought this workout was, was good. It was interesting. I've never seen anything like it. I had some struggles with the workout that were related to the program itself, not the workout, but the workout was good. Actually, it was entirely too easy. And I, I, don't, I don't know if that was just, I'm on a good day. I know I'm carrying a lot of freshness, so maybe it's the freshness. Maybe it's the Lactigo that I put on. Maybe it's Maybelline. 
I don't really know. The intensity factor was about a 0.9. My caloric burn was high. I know that the power was accurate because I was running both my power meter on my head unit and I ran the trainer directly to the program because it just, running the trainer directly tends to play better with erg mode on all the programs and trying to do your power match or your power meter. They both tracked perfectly with one another and it just felt like the workout was pretty much nothing. Like the first time I felt even any tightness in my legs was the last two intervals and maybe that was just a good day for me and tomorrow I'll ride like shit. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But the workout in general, the workout's good. If I kind of look through the workouts, their bread and butter is definitely high intensity. So this is something that you'd probably integrate for sharpening or training for racing. They do have some offerings in terms of like sweet spot and aerobic work and GCN has some workouts in there that you can certainly use. But I can see this as just being, this would be the go-to for that really high intensity. If you're sharpening for a race or really wanna get that high end going, that's where this program is certainly going to shine. I think I'll find other things that I like as I continue to go through this. You know, I, like the plans and all that stuff. I really have to dig into the stuff to get a really fair appraisal of what's going on. But I, I think that there's probably a lot to like about this program. I'll talk about a few things that I don't like. First, the music. It's nice that they tried to include it, but good God. It was just so bad. I had to turn it off after like two or three minutes. I get it with royalties, but maybe just buy a little bit better music. It was just such a mismatch for me. It, it was laughably bad. So just turn the music off if you're gonna use the program. Listen to your own tunes, whether you pump it through your computer, your, your speakers, if you've got your headphones on. I just threw my headphones on and uh, that was that. Another thing I didn't like, I will kind of pull up the uh, screen here. This is just kind of the middle of the workout, almost the midpoint. And this is kind of what I'm looking at. So I've got the video playing in the background here. You've got your metrics over here. Here's your graph and your progression through the graph. I think the, the progression through the graph is pretty similar to kind of what I see in uh, Trainer Road. So like that was fine to me. The one th the thing I really didn't like is where they've got the timer here. So the overall timers I think are fine. The interval timer, I don't think that this should be here. I really think you should be able to put that next to your power. You can't move that, that's stuck there. I don't like having to look down into the right to get what is left on the interval. You want that in the middle. I don't wanna be looking over here, especially I run this on a larger screen. I run it on my TV or even on screen like this. Like it just, I have to move my head to see it and I don't like it. So I think that that should go up here. You can toggle all of these on and off, which is kind of nice, but it's just, why would I want to see my, my miles per hour and my miles elapsed here on a program where it's, I'm not even traveling through a world. I mean, it's nice that they allow you to kind of turn it on, but why are those more prominent than the interval timer? That's kind of silly to me. Again, nitpicky, but just, I don't like it. Uh, they've got your goal RPE, which is kind of neat. I don't think that you'd need it with your power as much, but it's kind of interesting to see, especially if you're training with virtual power or something like that, but it's just, an interesting metric. I, I don't have that elsewhere. So it's kind of interesting that they added that there. You've got your cadence. I think it's a little distracting with the cadence that if you're really not right on the money, uh, I mean, I'm red because I'm eight RPM over. Even if you're one or two RPM over or under, like it turns blue. And for people who really like to hit their marks, it, it, it's kind of distracting to see a couple RPM off. They really should allow you to have a range. Like I think Zwift does a good job with that where it gives you kind of like five to seven RPM most of the time. The power is fine. Like you've got your targets up top and then you've got your actual down below. And then this timer countdown will turn on maybe 10 seconds before the interval change. And it'll show you your next power coming up. So you'll know 80 watts is coming up in 10 seconds. I think that's fine. I think that's fair. You got that little hourglass filling up. I think that that's nice, a little bit different, but I, I like that. You kind of know what to expect and what to prepare for. I like that. You got your heart rate, which is obvious. This is where things got weird for me. So I've got this up here. It says zone five at 157 beats per minute. So 157 beats per minute is my zone three. It is certainly not my zone five, but it wasn't consistent to my heart rate either because there was a point where I was at like 163 beats per minute and it said I was at zone four. And then one point it said I was at zone two at 145 beats per minute. And then another time it told me at the same heart rate, I was at zone three. So then I was wondering, okay, was it tracking against the upcoming target power? But that didn't seem to mesh well either. And it knew my FTP. So that definitely wasn't because I didn't have it programmed in. 
So I'm a little confused by the zone here and what it's tracked against. I, I don't know if it's guessing heart rate or what it's trying to do, but it was just way off the mark. It was really distracting actually. I didn't really know what to do with that. Uh, I'll see what happens if I ride again because I put my lactate threshold heart rate in there, but that number wasn't even consistent to itself. So uh, who knows? So we'll go back into the workout here and I will show you the big issue. And this is, um, this might be the deal breaker. Erg mode is really bad, really exceptionally bad. I mean, I, I bag on Zwift a little bit about their erg mode. And really the, the reason I bag on Zwift is for two reasons. And they are consistently bad reasons that I can work around. One is the transitions. They do a really bad job with the transition and the braking. Like I really want to see them start to apply that brake and release that brake in the couple seconds going up to the intervals and back from the intervals, especially when you have these huge swings in power they don't do it well. It's just a little bit jerky and then you end up a few seconds off and I've learned how to work around that. Uh, the other thing is the, the death spiral that you can end up with. Like if you wanna shift your cadence or shift your position, if you don't understand how bad erg mode is and really work to stay on top of it, you usually have to apply extra power to get it to catch and turn back down at your new cadence. So that, I don't particularly like. One of the nitpicky things that a lot of people notice about erg mode on Zwift is that it tends to undershoot you a little bit on power. So everybody's always like tickling that two, three, four watts below and it's not really pushing you at or a little above, which, you know, when you're trying to hit your marks, it's kind of obnoxious, right? You, you wanna be at your power level. So that's what I complain about Zwift for, but it's consistently that way. So you can work around it and deal with it for what it is. But for this program, it, it wasn't, bad in a predictable way. It was just all over the road and it, it just, I couldn't make sense of it. Usually I can work around something if I realize, okay, I see what it's doing. This is how I'll work around it. I, I couldn't even figure it out because it was just all over the place. Uh, and you can see some of these, that was me just tightening the bow on my shoes, but you can see all these like drops. This isn't me coasting after efforts that's literally gotten to the point where it wasn't actually applying the brake enough and it wasn't reading my power because my cadence, I was starting to spin out. Actually, this right here, that was me. I stopped, I unplugged the trainer, plugged it back in, and I calibrated my pedals to make sure it wasn't user error. I do this stuff at the beginning of the workout. I was like, well, maybe both of my things are wrong. I tried to do that and things didn't really improve with the next workout. There were a few little nuances I learned to work around for the second half, but the, the few things that it was doing is sometimes it would engage late and when you're working shorter intervals, I, granted, I probably should have turned erg off for this. I don't know if there's a quick key for it. I'm gonna have to look into that. So for short, you know, five, 10, 15 second intervals, I definitely would wanna turn that off. So if I could just hit a quick button for erg mode to turn that off, that's great. But you can see it was struggling actually, not at the short intervals as much as it was some of the longer intervals. Like if, if you can't nail erg mode on a one minute long interval where 15 seconds in, I'm still not at peak power. What's going on with that? Like I really didn't understand. It was kind of ruining some of the intervals for me because it just wasn't kicking in. Occasionally it would dig into the recovery. Honestly, I mean, that really wasn't bothering me as much. I know a lot of people whine about, oh, well, erg doesn't give me enough recovery, even though the delay at the beginning is usually the same as the delay at the end of the interval so it's just shifting everything that wasn't even the case sometimes it would pick up the interval on time and then it wouldn't release the brake for a good five seconds or so into the recovery sometimes it hit the recovery right on the money but then getting into the interval was like eight seconds late it just was all over the road and i was just really really kind of disappointed with it because i really wanted this to work well I was hoping at the bare minimum it would be serviceable like Zwift, right? I don't expect them all to nail it as well as Trainer Road does. Trainer Road has put a lot of research and development into that particular erg mode experience. Structure is their bread and butter. So that they want to nail that experience. So I wasn't expecting that, but I was not expecting it to be this bad either. I think the steady state is, is fine, again, minus my tightening of the bow on my shoes. I think it holds you fine. It, you know, I didn't really have any dropouts or anything like that, no weird surges or anything like that. But I feel like, you know, 45 second long interval here, this, this one minute interval here, like why am I spinning out? What's happening almost is that it doesn't apply the brake intelligently. If you've spent any time on a direct drive trainer, you'll know that if you go in too heavy of a gear, 
and then you get that cadence going too fast and you apply too much power, you hear that flywheel really start to spin up and start to whine. And that's when you start to have problems shifting back and forth because it, it, the flywheel just starts moving way too fast and then you're not able to spin the cassette fast enough for it to grab. That's a user error thing. You don't want to be in the 5011 working in erg mode because then that flywheel starts going nuts. I wasn't in the 5011. I was in the same cog as I am on both Swift and Trainer Road. I usually pick something in you know the top third so it gives me a little bit of room, just a nice straight chain line, and I run there, and I never have that flywheel start spinning up like I heard here. I had to actually shift several times in this workout to try to grab the flywheel and slow it down. My trainer never does that. It's the first time it's ever done that was in this program, and it worked fine a couple days ago, and I'm sure it will work fine if I plug it into Trainer Road or Zwift tomorrow. I was just wholly disappointed in the erg mode. And that might be the deal breaker for me because if, if the bread and butter of this is high intensity and I can't use the erg mode for high intensity here or I can't figure out a workaround for it, the program's pretty much useless to me because I've already have my steady state stuff dialed in elsewhere. I'm going to give it a fair shake. I'm going to give it the next, you know, couple of weeks of really kind of trying to dig into it to figure out, you know, where if I can turn erg off for these these shorter intervals, that's perfectly fair. That's perfectly fine. Even Trainer Road doesn't do those the short five, 10 second intervals great. That's fine. But I, I need I need anything that's like 30 seconds or longer to really dig in within a couple of seconds. Zwift does it, Ruby does it, Trainer Road does it. I think that's not too much to ask here. So I will see what happens. That's that's the big con for me right now. Other than that, I really don't have very meg many negative things to say about it. Mostly nitpicky stuff, but the erg thing is big. If you're gonna be a training platform, you at least need to make your erg serviceable. So. At any rate, I've got more work to do. I've got more rides to do on here. I don't think I'm gonna share every ride. I think I'm gonna just dig into some chunks of these things and give, uh, if there's some feedback to give along the way, that's great. If not, I'm just gonna kind of do a closing thoughts after two weeks. I'll let you know if I'm gonna keep the program, if I'm gonna move on from it. But hopefully this may be helpful to you. Maybe you might wanna check out the Sufferfest. They offer a 14 day free trial. I think that's perfectly generous. It's completely unrestricted from what I can tell. There's no limits. I can poke around and do pretty much whatever I want for the first 14 days. You know, aside from the erg mode thing, maybe you've had a different experience. Share down below if there's something you've done to work around it or if you've just had a great time with it. Uh, again, unless for some reason my trainer just magically decided to malfunction today, which maybe is the case. I, I don't think that it was. Let me know if you have any thoughts opinions, concerns, questions down below. I'd love to hear from you guys more down there. If you've got any value out of this video, please hit the thumbs up button. It really does help the video and the channel quite a bit. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. See you guys.